Alrighty, hello everyone. As you know, my name is Kelly Stinton, and I am reading Zombicorns by John Green. So, a while back, um, I got really, really incredibly sick, and then my computer decided to kill itself. However, now I am both healthy and have a computer that works and a microphone that works, so I'm going to now continue Chapter 9. Chapter 9. Caroline had a real zeal for the business of Z completion. I saw desification as a kind of responsibility, but for Caroline, it was war. On our third day together, we took her semi-truck cab down the expressway to Indiana. The cab was brand new, painted purple, with a pink outline of a naked lady on each door, and riding shotgun, I felt like I was sitting two stories high. Behind her captain's chair, two bunk beds and a TV with a DVD player that ran on electric power generated by the diesel engine. Mr. President loved it back there, happily sleeping the day away above the pleasant rumbling of the road. Caroline's forehead was about on level with the top of the huge steering wheel, but somehow she managed to see well enough to drive. Driving in the AZ is not tremendously challenging, there being very limited traffic. Lots of pedestrians, of course, but they're all zed up. I can't believe I never thought of a semi-truck, I said. They're fast, and they come equipped with a bedroom that locks. Plus, it's like the last way to watch movies. Kinda top-heavy, though, and you gotta drive stick. So we drove for a long time past endless fields of corn. We could tell it was all zed out corn, because it wasn't planted in anything approaching rows. We drove and drove, occasionally spotting Z's filling buckets with stagnant water from the roadside ditches. Caroline didn't stop for these little gaggles. She had bigger plans. So the thing you've got to do, she was telling me while we listened to an old CD of country songs, is you got to think like corn. That's why I got all those books on corn. Everybody who's Z'd out is basically an extension of corn. That's how I figure it. They're basically humanoid corn. They want what corn wants and when corn wants it. And what does corn want? The question sounded rhetorical, and there was a pleasantness to the pace of Caroline's speech. She talked rhythmically, almost to the beat of the bass line of the sad old song playing quietly just over the roar of the diesel engine. But she kept waiting for an answer, glancing over at me. More corn? I said finally. Right, exactly. You're a smart kid, Mia. You're like a little me. I was, in fact, far bigger than her, but I didn't say anything. In the bees, I had been what is known as a big girl. Definitely overweight, but not by any standard fully obese. I was, for point of comparison, a size 12. Zombie apocalypses have a nice way of thinning a girl out, and on the Caroline day I was wearing girls' jeans size 6, and a medium t-shirt extolling the talents of a band that had long since disbanded due to a desire to pursue new opportunities, specifically the opportunity to plant, water, cultivate, and harvest D131Y maize. Anyways, in the AZ, big girls are totally beautiful. So are big guys, because the Zs look like silver bags of bones, and the opposite of Zenus, full, soft, and warm, has naturally become desirable. A good rule of thumb is that as I change, the understanding of hotness definitionally changes, because the ancient master has previously decided that the meaning of hotness is not you. And what corn fears is less corn. Corn fears separation from itself. That's why in cities the zed out tar up all the fences between backyards. Separation into fields would mean cultivation, would mean that we are in charge. Corn can't stand the thought that something other than corn would be in charge, which means the zed out can't stand the idea either. Which means the surest way to attract gaggles and gaggles is Z's is? Uh, I don't know. Separation, she said. Get between corn and more corn. I don't get it, I said. But within an hour she showed me. We drove so far, it turned out, because Caroline's desification strategy required a hill, which Chicagoland does not have in abundance. At last we came to a deforested, corn-covered hill downstate, just north of Rockford. Caroline exited the interstate, 
drove along a narrow county road for a few minutes, and then turned into a cornfield, driving up the hill to a small ridge, maybe a hundred vertical feet from where we'd turned off the road. She drove a straight line along the ridge, plowing down the knee-high corn under the massive grill of the semi-truck, slicing a mile-long break in the field, and then she turned around slowly, carefully, a nine-point turn atop this hill, the massive tires of the truck digging into the soft black soil, and then, dirt flying behind us, she drove to the approximate midpoint of the slice we'd made in the cornutopia. She pulled up the parking brake and threw open the door. "'What now?' I asked. "'We wait,' she answered. Caroline turned back into the sleep quarters and grabbed her two M16s and a backpack clanking with extra ammo clips. I grabbed my AR-15, and then we went outside. A clear afternoon in spring, just cool enough that I wanted all the heat the sun could give me. We sat on the cab's hood, leaning against the huge glass windshield. It was so flat and treeless that we could see for miles in every direction. The corn, packed tight together, literally everywhere. It took a few minutes before we saw our first gaggle, maybe twenty-five Zs, zigging and zagging through the corn careful, as they always were, not to disturb the growth of the D-131Y. They slouched toward us, their spines twisted from the endless hours of planting and watering, bending down to the earth the way flowers contort toward the sunlight. They were carrying Z-staffs, the walking sticks, sharp on one side, blunt on the other, they used to speed planting. It took them forever to get within firing range. As we waited, Caroline said, "'What's your sister's name?' Holly, I said. Do you think Holly's still in there somewhere? I don't know, I said. There could always be a, I don't know, a cure or whatever. Who's going to discover that, Kiyomiya? You? Me? Yeah, I don't know, I said. You think they're in range? Technically, but if you get them too far out or you clip a leg or something, it takes forever to get them down. Yeah, I said. Okay. "'You religious?' she asked. "'No,' I said. "'I was raised a secular humanist. "'You?' "'Not so much any more,' she said. "'Still a little. "'It's like a cold I can't quite shake.' "'You got any people left?' I asked. "'As I was asking, she raised an M-16 to her right shoulder. "'All right, Mia, let's light em up.' She fired a short burst, then another, and the Zs started to fall forward, then crawling until one of us lit up their heads or they ran out of blood to trail behind them. Even once you got a headshot, they kept digging their hands into the ground, trying to crawl through the corn, and I was always astounded by the way they kept going until they were well and truly dead, the relentlessness with which they clung to a life that, by any objective measure, was miserable. The next gaggle wove towards us from the east— so we swung around to the side of the cab and took aim, waiting for them to get into range. It was a larger gaggle, maybe as many as forty, and lots of kids, skinny and bony. Zs age, but they're known to be sterile, an evolutionary dead end. So all the kids were human once, and they tend to congregate in the same gaggles. I hate the kids, I said. No room for sentiment in this game, Caroline answered. I think they're ready if you're ready. I sighted an adult Z and squeezed the trigger, the gun butt pounding into my arm, and I watched the sight as the Z tumbled to the ground. Headshot. Caroline had in the same time taken out three adults, although with less ammunitional efficiency, and as I sighted up the next grown Z, the inevitable happened. I watched the adult Z grab a kid by the arm and hold up the kid by the armpits, using the squirming zed out kid as a shield. Within seconds, all the remaining adults had kid shields, and while Caroline kept firing, tearing through the kids and then destroying the adults with dozens of bullets apiece, perfectly willing to disembowel them, I just kept my sight dancing over this one Z kid squirming in the arms of its compatriots. The world was upside down. "'Come on, Mia,' Caroline said. That kid was someone's sister, is the thing. And it might be curable. I knew it was this failure to pull the trigger that had led to the virus's epidemic spread in the first place. 
If we'd aggressively killed people the moment they exhibited signs of infection, we might have contained the virus. And I knew that Holly was not in the body of the skinny little girl, kicking her unsocked, sneakered feet, trying to get back to the ground, back to the corn she loved. I knew, in fact, that Holly was not in Holly's body. I knew this, but I couldn't pull the trigger. In the end, Caroline lit them up, both of them, and they fell forward, the adult covering the child, making him invisible. "'It's actually helpful to believe that humans have souls,' she said, "'because if you believe in souls, it's very easy to look at them and know they don't have souls, "'that the virus stole their souls, and that you aren't killing them, "'cause their themness has already been killed. "'You're killing the virus, which is a fracking privilege as far as I'm concerned.' "'Yeah,' I said. "'I knew she was right. "'It's not like I never killed a Z,' I said. I lit up my frackin' parents. It's just, like, this. I mean, it's slaughter. Yeah, slaughter of the virus. She was right. I put a new clip in the AR-15, and when the next gaggle came, I mowed them down myself, standing on the hood, knees bent so the gun wouldn't throw me backwards, eviscerating every last one of them. We killed them all afternoon, with moments of idle conversation between, until our ridge was ringed with the bodies and they were crawling over their dead to get to us, their Z-staffs raised, still trying to repair the crack in their blessed corn. And we just kept completing them until the sun was low in the sky. They came more slowly then, and when I asked Caroline why, she theorized, we were all theorizing all the time, that a gaggle could only sense the cut in its field for a few miles. This made no sense, of course. Zs were stunningly, amazingly stupid, and I found it hard to believe that they were able to telepathically communicate with corn. It seemed more reasonable that they heard the gunfire and were attracted to it, wanting to protect each other and the far fields. But neither of us knew anything about Zenus from the inside. As the clear sky began to purple, we went twenty minutes without a gaggle. My arms were jelly from a day of shooting, and the Z's were starting to stink, and I told Caroline I was ready to go. "'Just one more,' she said. "'Who even knows if there are any more?' "'There's always another,' she said. She swung her legs around and disappeared into the open door of the cab. A few moments later she appeared with a rocket launcher, as long as her and nearly as thick. She struggled to hand it up to me. I held it, the red-tipped rocket visible inside the launcher, my hands shaking, scared it would blow up in my face. I'd never seen a rocket launcher before. We sat there with the rocket launcher, which stretched across both of our laps, for a few minutes. In the twilight it was harder to see the Z's coming, so I didn't notice the gaggle until they were crawling over their putrid compatriots. Three o'clock, I said. Caroline turned her head to the gaggle. Magnificent, she said. Help me lift this thing. I did. She stood up and raised the rocket launcher with me holding it up. She took aim, then fired, falling so hard back into the windshield I thought she'd break it. The noise of the rocket was literally deafening, so I watched in the roaring silence as it flew over the heads of the gaggle, beyond the piled bodies, and into the field behind, lighting a fire in the corn. She'd missed. I started to raise my gun to my shoulder, but Caroline pushed the barrel down. I turned to her, confused. She pointed out towards the field, mouthing the word, Watch. So I did. I watched in the fading light as the Z's spun around, saw the fire, and shuffled away from us, back over the wall of bodies towards the fire. I watched as they beat the spreading fire with their Z-staffs and their stomping feet, and then I watched as they threw themselves one after another onto the flames to smother the fire and save the corn from burning. Later, as Caroline and I drove down the interstate, I said, I expected them to scream or something. On the fire, you mean? Yeah. But they hadn't. They hadn't even made those zed up grunts. They just dove onto the flames one after another, silent resolved. You know the phrase, ultimate concern? She asked. I did not. It's something they talked about a lot in my church. Ultimate concern is like the thing that matters most, 
what ultimately motivates your living for what would you die what is your capital U ultimate capital C concern I didn't know for them it's corn she said so it's no big sacrifice to give up their lives for it it's almost a privilege I think that's why they smile when you offer them like I said everyone had a theory for everything 